Good morning. My Forest River Cardinal Camper hot water heater started leaking last summer on a trip. And so I started taking it apart and trying to figure out how it comes out of here. I've seen some have to be taken out from the inside. And then I wanted to be able to take it out from the outside. So I just started playing around. And then I realized I probably should make a video on this just to show other people that what they can do. So there was four screws here. I removed them and then I had to use like a one of these five-in-one tools to kind of get under here and pry up the old seal. And there's some silicon down here, of course, but I can go ahead and pull that right off. And if you see that it's really, there's light all the way around here. And when I moved it on the inside, it did pivot a little bit. So I looked, it looks like the only thing holding this in place is these two screws right here. So, I think what I want to do is verify where the leak was because I did look at it and I think it was coming from someplace underneath. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but I want to make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the water hoses. First, I'll let you take a look at this in here. I got a some light and you can see that the water was coming. I thought it was coming from down under here. But I want to make sure that wasn't coming from, you know, someplace up here. And the only thing I think of is maybe something just got old. Or maybe I didn't drain it all the way one winter. And it froze or cracked. So my next step is just to figure out how to get this out of here. And I think that once I did undo the screws, I just undo those top screws. And disconnect uh, these water inlet hoses it looks like there's enough cable here that I can pull the wiring out the front will have something to set it on and then the other thing is the gas the gas line is going to have to come undone so that's the biggest thing I think is the gas line coming undone so let's get some water on this in this and let's try to see if we can find out where it's leaking from Open this bypass valve. The pump is leaking right there. See it? So something. Okay, you'll shut it off. Something under here. So it's got to come out because it's not leaking from here. I just want to make sure it wasn't leaking from an obvious spot. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Make sure the hot water heater breaker's off. Next, I'm going to turn the water off. I've got it in bypass, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to leak anywhere. All right, let's release pressure off the line. Not too much water pressure in there. And then let's drain. Let's go ahead and drain the system. Okay, so there wasn't one right underneath that. That hot water heater. I'm just going to drain all these because I don't know what specifically which one's supposed to be drained. And there's several of these throughout the camper. I'm just going to drain them all. Let's drain these ones. And I do see one over near the, like right over there. I'm going to drain that one if you can see where I'm pointing. Right over there. Let's go ahead and drain that one. So six of these. Probably the one that drains the most, but I didn't fill it up. I didn't let it fill up too long. Probably not much water in it. I thought I already did this yesterday. I'm going to put a little bit of WD-40 on here. And I'm going to put more down here on this sacrificial anode. Because I'm going to pull it out and take a look at it. Just to see what shape it's in. Alright, now that I did that, I used this one to support it. And I just pulled this one back and it, it broke free, no problem at all. So I, just, I just didn't want to damage anything here with this solenoid, this unit for the gas metering. There we go. Now I can pull this goop off here and this so this can be able to pull through. 
it's off. Under here was a, like a, some type of a grommet gasket, and then the goop is on top of that. So now I can slide that through pretty easily. I think this is going to come out fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to undo the water lines on the inside, and then want to set something down here so I can maybe pull this out and look at it without undoing all the wires. And these were a little bit tight, so I just put a, I wrapped a washcloth and a pair of pliers around it so I could grab it. I just didn't want to chew up the plastic, so then it would end up being sharp. And plus, I'm going to put that underneath here for water. That's a lot of water. Let me get another rag. Grab a dog towel, a full towel, and I thought I'd just show you this, the challenge of it, because you're going to face different challenges too. Might as well show you what I had to go through to do this. I'm just going to put this under here to soak up most of the water. And then I'll drain it. Shouldn't be too much in there. And the top one, I already loosened that one up previously too. There we go. All right. It's free. So I've got these wires here. And it looks like there's enough wire. I'm going to try to move it out the front once I pull, push this through. And then everything else, I'm just going to look and looks like it's free. I'm going to have to use both hands to pull this out. So give me a minute to pull it out. I'm going to set it on top of this trash can. All right, this is a little more challenging than I thought because I had to work from the outside. I had to kind of take a long, flat thing to get in there to push it so you can get the styrofoam through the small opening. So now I'm trying to get this. I'm not sure if it's... I need to get the styrofoam pushed up top and then push through. So again, off camera, so I have no one to help me today. But I think I'm gonna try, if I, maybe if I pull this piece of wood back right here, it'll allow the front end of that to dip. So that worked. I just pulled this piece of wood back a little bit because it wasn't attached and allowed it to slip underneath there. If you can, underneath. You can see it's out. And I'm just going to work the unit out and set it right here. Now, uh, one more thing, the wiring looks like it's semi-free, but this is your electrode lead for your spark. It doesn't have much play, so I'm going to have to, I don't know what I'm going to do, pull it through this hole. I don't, doesn't look like this hole is big enough to pull this through. Okay, that's what I got to pull that through. Oh, yeah, I should be able to pull that through though. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I still got to pull this off. This is, I guess this electrical box up here. It'll pull it off. So let's see if I can get that off there. And then it'll pull here because it's in the way. I thought I could dip the bottom down enough to get that off, but I can't. So you're gonna have to do that too. So that was just sticky glued on there, some type of sticky tape. And it actually had this lead going to it, which was the, the spark lead. And I took that off, so it's to the side down. I want to be super safe. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this whole connector off. And we'll set this to the side with the rest of the stuff. Man, it's turned out to be a little more of a job than I thought, but it's actually a little easier than I thought. I thought I was going to pull it out from the inside. So I'm really happy I can pull this from the outside. So that was blocking mine. Now it can pull right out. Thing on. I'll probably just tie it back on with paracord or something. Or find some new straps. I'm going to unscrew this one to give myself a little bit more room too. To either find out where the leak is or just replace the tank or the whole unit. Probably the whole unit, but it's right around 500 bucks. So I'm just going to do some visual inspections on this and see if I can find a crack in the seal or something like that. Is it something I could weld up? Is it something I could fiberglass up? We'll see. Well, look at that. I took a wire brush to it, scraped it clean, and there's a little hole right there. I don't know how rusted, much rust is on the backside, but this wasn't that hard to take out. I'm just going to spot weld that baby right there. 
and stick it back in. If it breaks again, I'll pull it out and replace the tank. So I ground away a little more and I found another hole right here. So I want to make sure, it looks like this whole area, maybe the camper moving has been beat up against the, uh, the wood underneath it. And it's kind of worn away right there. All right, I'm back one more time. The hole, it's not much behind there and the hole, the hole is getting a little bit bigger. So I don't think I can even weld that to be honest with you. I probably could find a piece of metal and wrap around there and weld the whole thing on. But what I'm gonna do is go the simple way. And I got some JB weld called water weld that sets underwater. I'm not so much worried about that because it's not that wet in there, but it does, uh, it's for boats and it can hold 9,000 PSI. And the cure time is one hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and I'm just gonna put the whole tube on here, starting with here and press it in. And then I'll spread it through this whole area. And that's what I'm going to do. And if it leaks again, I'm going to buy a new one. But for whatever this cost, I don't know because I bought it a while ago. I'm going to give it a shot. And I'm just going to hope it works. So I think I'm going to clean up this area a little bit better. So I can spread this out and feather it out a little bit better. But I've had really good luck with these uh, type of product. I've used the steel one on an engine block before. And it did really well. Alright, with any of these products like this, you basically just take it out of there. You knead it with your fingers. Like you can cut it. I'm just going to pull these caps off. And then you put it back on there. Spread it out. So I'm going to start kneading this until it's nice. And like, like almost like a clay. And at first it's really difficult. Actually I think it's got a cover on it. Let me take that off first. And this stuff once you get on your fingers is so hard to get off. So I'm just gonna turn it into Play-Doh and push it into place. So I'm getting really good consistency on this now. It's getting easier to squeeze because we're warming up under my hands and of course I think the chemical reaction warms it up. And then I'm gonna put it on here. And press it into the couple different holes. I think I'm gonna keep the whole thing as one big piece without breaking it apart. But I'm really going to push it into those holes. I want it to fill that area up. That'll be the thickest area. And feather it out so it sticks really good. So that's it. You only get 25 minutes working time. It's plenty of time actually. And then it's going to cure for one hour. So I'm going to go wash this goop off my hands. And then just let that, let that set up. Well, that is dry now. So I've got a can of Rust-Oleum Rust Converter. I'm just going to spray the spots with rust on it. Just so it doesn't rust back through any of the other spots. Not Probably not needed, but might as well since I have it. Well, there it is. Time to uh, go ahead and put it back in. I also had some rust in the bottom of this thing. I went ahead and sprayed it too to convert that. And I'm going to put some insulation in there. So I'm going to put that just as some insulation and give it some padding on the bottom of the tank. So I'll lay this in here and I decide the way that I'm going to wrap this instead of using this this material I took off I'm going to use everybody's favorite duct tape. Well there it is. Good as new. Now I just got to clean this mess up in here and let's get it installed back in there but I just wrapped some tape around it to hold the uh insulation in place well it was tough getting back in there actually there was a lip on the camper about right here and i ground that down and kind of tried to take the sharp edge off but and then i put this metal tape over the top of that so when i put the 
top piece on. Of course, it'll be totally covered, but just to protect myself. Uh, the next thing I gotta do, I already ran this wire through. I gotta connect that board on the top side, and I've gotta run my gas line back through to here. And this is where that, right here is where that red connector goes, and then that the uh, main connector connects to the side. Through here, that, and then connect it, and then I've got a magical, super magical tool that everybody knows about, everybody uses. place and then get that down I just want something to hold it in place it's not that significant I like to go hand tight with these as much as possible because that takes these flared ends. If you try to use a wrench right off the bat, you should cross thread it. I'm just gonna put that cover plate on. But I think what I want to do is check it for leaks first before I completely finish the job. Tank must be filling up. There's a little bit of rust in the water. Let's clean that. All right, let's see what we can do here. Gas is on. Oh, there we go. Gas works. Well, for now, we got no leaks. I'll just have to check it, and if it's leaking, replace it. But we got. Hot water. Yep. Ooh, ooh. Oh, my God. I can turn that down a little bit. That's pretty hot. Well, that does it. Uh, hopefully, that helps you with your hot water heater and deciding, you know, knowing how to take it out, but then deciding whether just to replace it or try to patch it in some way. And if you enjoyed this video, if this helped you, just give me a like. That's all I ask. So, hopefully, it did help you. And happy camping and go out and enjoy everything outdoors.